Okay, so let's say that you added an SSD to your system. You're running a Linux system with KDE, Ubuntu, Arch, KDE. If you're on Gentoo, you probably don't need this tutorial. But any KDE distro that's somewhat recent, uh, and you go into Steam, like you're on Windows, you go to Steam, Settings, you want to choose your library folders, and then you get this. Uh, well, there's a easier way to work with this that doesn't require you to manually select paths like this with auto mounting. Um, so I'm going to show you how to do that. And all you really have to do is you go to KDE Partition Manager and then you type in your password. And now you're here on the screen. So let's just say you installed a Samsung A60 Evo or you got something on it and you don't want the data. Uh, you can create a new partition table, make sure it's GPT, and then create a new partition table. And so if you right click this, which is the unallocated space, you can do a new one. And you can make this any file system you want. I do not recommend you do BDRFS, ButterFS, or NTFS because uh, Steam actually has problems with those. So if you're new to whatever this is, you're new to Linux or whatever you're doing, uh, make sure you do it as ext4, which is extended for. Um, but if you want a slightly faster one for SSDs, which uh, seems to work better on uh, most systems with NVMe drives and S, uh, SATA SSDs. I like to choose XFS. So I'm gonna do that. And I've already got one called games one. So I'm gonna label this games underscore two, just so it's easier to work with. Um, that's why I'm putting that underscore there. And uh, you can encrypt it if you want but it's a games folder so i mean you don't really have to uh, do that if you don't want to and if you're doing this on a system where you need to encrypt it you probably shouldn't be installing steam on it so press ok and now you can see that we have this new space and this hasn't been actually sent to the hardware to the kernel to tell the kernel what to do to the actual hardware so what we do now is we press apply and then we just apply those pending operations. And so that's done. And so now here's another trick. Um, so you don't have to mount them every time. Uh, what you do is uh, you can open up a terminal and you can go uh, CD over to mount, which is dash MNT. And if we LS right now, you can see I've already created games underscore one, games underscore two. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna remove that games two and show you how to do that. So one second. Okay, so I just removed it. So if I LS, you can see only games one is there. So we have to do sudo uh, make der mkdir and for me it's going to be games 2 and now if we ls you can see games 2 is now there and so for me I didn't have to put in my password because I just did a sudo command before that and I cleared the terminal uh, for you, you're going to have to type in your password when you do the sudo command because that's super user do. And so now uh, we have this persistent directory we can work with without having to get remounted and taking a guess where it's going to be mounted. It could be a random value depending on what the kernel has said. But that's, that's getting a little too complicated. I'm just trying to show you guys how to do this the easy way. And so now, uh, now that we have games two on in mount, which if you type this out, it's in mount 
games too. And you can see there's nothing in there. So we can go back over to KDE's Partition Manager and just right click our games to uh, partition we created. And then we're going to edit the mount point and we're going to select a mount point. And so now we just go over here to mount and then select games two or whatever you called it. And then click OK. And you can see that this is all set up. You don't have to touch anything else here. Um, all you do is you press OK. If that is the correct looking directory, then you just press OK. And now what this has done, and uh, you also will get a, an additional pop-up that says this is going to edit dash etc dash fstab, which is your basically your file system initialization file. Uh, but that's getting beyond the scope of this basic tutorial. As long as this says the correct directory that we just created with the name that you gave it, then this should be good. Uh, if you want to double check, what you can actually do is cat etc f stab, and you can check that. And uh, we can do that right now. So you can see here, and if I uh, if I zoom in, I forgot how to zoom in. One second. Okay, it was a lot simpler than I thought. <laughs> um, you can see we have all this random stuff here, right? Um, but what we're looking for is specifically what we just did. Um, so this doesn't matter. I, this is all the main operating system. This is the other drive I have. Let's pretend it's not even there. But this is what we just created. Dev SDA one mount point is mount games and the file system and the defaults. And so that, again, that command that I just typed in was cat dash etc dash fstab, I mean, forward slash, I don't know why I'm saying dash. <laughs> um, but as long as that looks correct, then it's good. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to restart my system so I can show you this the way it auto mounts it. Okay, so I restarted my system. Now I got a nice blank thing. So if I go to my file manager, you can see I'm in my videos. That's one of these is the videos that's being made right now. But uh, if you go over to your devices, uh, you can go to your thing. For me, it's games too. And you can see it doesn't have uh, like an Ubuntu when you mount a hard disk. It always has a random name. It's always very strange. But in this one, it's very straightforward. Uh, it's just called games two, and it always mounts in the same directory. It's always in the same place when you start up your system because it's in the, the file system initialization folder. Um, but one thing you're going to notice is, uh, unfortunately, uh, you can't you can't do anything. And let me go get the command to uh, fix this, actually. Okay, so... The command is very simple. It's uh, ch own, uh, basically the directory owner, um, recursive. Uh, what that means is if there are any files here, like folders, it would go into those folders and give you the ownership of those folders and those files in those folders and so on and so forth. And then for me, it's Jordan colon Jordan uh, because that's my username, but whatever your username is, uh, and you can very quickly find that out uh, by opening a terminal and it'll say your name at your system, whatever your system's called. And you just replace Jordan with your name there. So how do we actually make it so we can do this? So we're going to go back in that terminal. I'm not sure why I, I closed it, but uh, we're going to CD mount games to and so we're going to run sudo chown recursive your username colon your username and then a period and what the period means is it's basically telling the command this directory that I'm in and so you type in your password and now when you go back to this folder uh, 
you have access to it. So this is kept in a specific file in the, um, the system configuration. Uh, so this is persistent, which means every time you restart your system, you will have access like you do right now. And that's what the ch own command does. So you can basically go get as many hard drives as you want and then just keep doing this over and over again if you really wanted to, but that'd be kind of expensive. So for me, having a main NVMe drive and two game drives is more than enough. But it might be different for you. You may have a huge library. So let me close all these windows and uh, we'll uh, continue with this. Okay, so we're going to go back into Steam now. Steam had an update, so <laughs> I had to deal with that for a little while. So uh, we're going to go back into the settings, which is Steam settings. Then we're going to go back into your downloads folder and back in your Steam library folder. And now when you click this plus, uh, it's going to automatically detect that you have a new drive that it can create a Steam library folder in. And if you just add that, uh, now this is persistently available to Steam, so you can choose whatever drive you want to install your Steam games in, which I think is great, especially with Proton. Right now, I am going to actually install one of my bigger games on the games one because it's my faster NVMe drive and then I'll install a couple of smaller games onto my SSD uh, my SATA SSD and uh, yeah that's kind of how I like to do things because the bigger games take longer to load but you can do whatever you want but hopefully this tutorial helped you and uh, basically all you do now is you just close this click OK and uh, yeah that's about it so Hopefully this tutorial helped you, and uh, I'll see you in the next video, so uh, peace out.